so is my screen is visible to all is it visible yes sir good afternoon all today we shall begin to discuss vhdl in today's session so we will discuss introduction to hardware description language in this we will discuss in today's session so we will discuss the purpose of hardware description languages and the about uh, the vhdl history and then the hardware description language abstractions the levels of uh, abstractions in hardware description language and we will see the digital design flow and here we will see the digital design flow uh, in two ways the classical digital design flow and the modern digital design flow so today we will mostly discuss about the introduction to the hardware description languages and the levels of abstractions and the digital design flow so here the hdl is stands for so what is the acronym for the uh, hdl so here the acronym for the hdl is hardware description language it is hardware description language so what uh, can we sense from the acronym of hdl so the hdl stands that hardware description language this stands that hardware description language so which means so it is a language which describes the digital hardware here so from the hdl we can sense that it is a language which describing the digital hardware so now what is the purpose of hardware description languages here what is the purpose of hardware description languages the purpose of hardware description languages is to describe the digital circuit using a text based language here so the purpose of the hardware description language is to describe the digital circuit using a, a text based language so it means that hardware description languages describe the large system or a very large system digital system without the need for the schematics here so for example take when we want to design a digital system when we want to design a digital system just a minute wait a second so here the hardware description languages describe large system and a very large digital system without the need for the schematics here so so how we can understand this point here so let us say if we wanted to design a digital system so uh, how do we design a digital system with the help of these schematics we can design uh, for instance uh, take an example design a full adder circuit here design a full adder circuit here 
full adder circuit. So when we wanted to design a full adder circuit, so we will define the, the number of inputs to the circuit and we will define the, the outputs. They are the specifications of the circuit. Now, if, if we wanted to design this full adder circuit, then how we can design this full adder circuit? You can design this full adder circuit using two half adder circuits. Using two half adder circuits, isn't it? So two half adder circuits. And where we will specify the, uh, we will represent the, the inputs, right? We will represent the input and we will specify the outputs. So now what is that schematic here? So the full adder circuit is represented in a schematic diagram such that the full adder circuit is implemented. The full adder circuit is designed using two half adder circuits. Let's say A, B, C, E. Let's say carry in. And the outputs are sum and carry out. So for a simple circuits and a smaller circuits can be designed using the schematics. Whereas if you have a large circuits, a very large and complex circuits, so which can become impractical for to design the very large design systems. So we cannot uh, uh, define the, or we cannot describe the, the very large circuits with the schematics here. You take another example, microprocessor. Let's take the, the microprocessor chip or an integrated circuit of a microprocessor or generally uh, we can say a microprocessor. So when we take the microprocessor, the microprocessor is the combination of these several other component. It is not uh, alone a single component to describe the circuit where it has these several other parts to describing the circuit here. To describing the circuit. So what are the other parts here? So that can be represented this way. So the microprocessor. So uh, it has an accumulator, sorry, it has an arithmetic logic unit and a control unit and an array of resistors and timing and control circuits. So which means that the microprocessor is representing with the a block diagram, which is the schematic diagram for that microprocessor. So now if we wanted to represent the, the schematic representation of the ALU, the ALU comprises of the several logic elements. The control unit has the several logic elements and the other parts of the microprocessor will have the other several logic elements. So now it is impractical. It is very tedious process to represent the, the microprocessor with the schematic representation of the each element. So we cannot represent the each element in that ALU or the each element in the control unit or the each elements in the a resistor of array. It is very impractical here. Okay, so for simple circuits and for the smaller circuits, we can easily design with these schematics. Whereas for the very large circuits and the very complex circuits, uh, it is very difficult for us to design the impractical. We can say that it is a impractical one. So now here the HDLs, the purpose of HDL is, the hardware description languages is, so they describes the, the large circuits and very large circuits without the need for the, the schematics here, without the needs of the schematic. And here a very large circuits and the complex circuits can be efficiently designed with a, a top-down methodology using the hardware description languages. So we can easily and we can efficiently design the complex logic circuits 
with a top down methodology using the hardware description language in fact hdls the hardware description languages are the current industry standards for describing and designing the digital systems here so they are today they are the the current uh, industry standard for to describe and design the digital systems here and here the hdls the hardware description languages the hardware description languages were originally uh, defined or uh, they were originally designed for documentation purpose and for the uh, the behavioral simulation here so mainly they are used for uh, mainly uh, they are used for the uh, documentation purpose and for the the behavioral simulation so which means that the logical uh, simulation here so you can verify the the functionality by simulation here or you can verify the the behavior of the circuit using the simulation here so here uh, so mainly the hdls the hardware description languages for describing the or for designing the digital systems so they were originally designed for documentation of the behavior and they were designed for the behavioral simulation and here the hdl support for the logic simulation at different levels of the abstraction here so they can be uh, uh, logics are uh, these logic simulation can be performed at a behavior level at a behavior a behavioral level or it can be performed at a data flow level or the logic simulation can be performed at the structural level so here the hardware description languages support for logic simulation at different levels of the abstractions here so in the earlier to the hdls so in the beginning days so when it was in at the time of uh, uh, the hdls i mean the hardware description languages were introduced at that time the hardware description languages they were meant for only for the documentation and for the logic simulation only so now if you want to again synthesis the logic circuit again we have to use the the cad tools here or the the classical uh, traditional design flow to design that logic circuits so in the beginning of the hardware description languages they they had only the documentation and the, for the logic simulation here but the logic synthesis tools were developed the logic synthesis tools were developed independently and later modified the logic synthesis and they are used to work with the hardware description languages here so after that the hdl hardware description languages also evolved to support for the automated synthesis here they are supported to the automated synthesis here what do you mean this synthesis here the synthesis is nothing but the designing of the circuit here so automated synthesis so when the hardware description languages have evolved to support for this synthesis automated synthesis so which allows the the cad tools to take the functional description of the system so they will take directly the the functional description of the digital system and automatically creates the the gate level circuit the gate level circuit here automatically they will creates the the gate level circuit so which is to be implemented in a real hardware circuit so here when you take the the digital system when we really implement the circuit so what we will do here so we will 
so we will first take the, the block diagram representation and then we will see the what are the what are the logic circuits that are needed to implement that the description to implement the description and once if we have then we will go for the the logic gates to implement that description here so example you take again the full adder circuit so for to implement that full adder circuit so we will take the schematic representation so where the schematic representation has two blocks here it has two half adders it has two half adders and so now uh, you you will have only the the inputs and outputs at this level but now you go one level down to this so now you will have the, the basic gates here. You will have the, the basic gates in each of the half pair circuit. So that is the gate level here. So to, uh, to have this uh, half a circuit, so what we will take, so we will take one exclusive R gate for the sum and one AND gate for to represent the carry. So that is the gate level representation. So now in this hardware description languages, it have supported it will support it for the automated synthesis here so this automated synthesis allow the cat tools so that is the computer aided design tools so they will take the the functional description of the digital system which means that they will take the block diagram so we will specify the inputs and output of that function so the cat tools takes the, the description that is the block diagram inputs and output the behavior and automatically creates the the gate level circuits here so that is what automated synthesis the automated synthesis in that the computer aided design tools it takes the behavior of the circuit by block diagram or from the block diagram and they will create automated gate level circuits which is to be implemented in the real hardware circuit, which is to be uh, 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 implemented in the real hardware circuit here. So that is the advantage with the hardware description languages here. One of the advantages, hardware description language here. So here, uh, let's uh, so just summarize the the purpose of the hardware description languages the need or the the purpose is so one is the hardware description languages describes the the large and a very large and complex digital systems without need of the schematic circuits it doesn't mean that the hdls uh, they don't use the schematics representation still the schematic representations are used at the board levels where it is necessary to uh, describe the, the wiring to the other parts of the system or the wiring to the other external connections. At that cases, the schematic representation will be used. But the hardware description languages without that schematic, so they will describe the operation of the digital system. That is one advantage or the purpose with the HDL. And the second one, the hardware description language implements or it can easily design the, the complex logic circuits using the, the top down methodology in that hardware description language. So we will see what is that top down design. And the, the, the other one is, so it, can, it will describe the behavior it will support for the logic simulation and it will support for the logic synthesis. Logic simulation is to verify the, the functionality of the behavior and the logic synthesis, the logic synthesis is used to convert the, the higher level of the circuit to the, the gate level here. It will be translated to the higher level of the block diagram to the, the gate level here. So these are all the advantages with the hardware description languages here. And then we will move to the, so here we will move to the, the milestones in the, uh, the milestones in the, uh, the 
digital logic and in the hardware description languages. So this single picture will describe, uh, it, uh, it shows the how the technology is evaluated and how the CAD tools were, are evaluated so that you can see from this diagram here. So let's see, uh, in this diagram if you see, so the theory is evaluated. So see here in the year 1984, so this George Bloom creates the a two valued algebraic frame here. So the, the Boolean postulates, so the logic postulates were introduced by this uh, George Bull uh, in the year 1984 here. And uh, after this uh, 1859, these are all major milestones here. So after this uh, 1854, this uh, algebraic frame work, the 1859, the August D. Morgan has given two laws here. And we all know the, the D. Morgan laws, A plus B whole bar equal to A bar dot B bar and A B whole bar is equal to A bar plus B bar. So there are very important laws as far as concern with the, the digital circuits and digital logic. So in 1859, this August D. Morgan has added the two theorems or the two laws to the Boolean framework here. That is one of the main major milestone. And in the year 1930, the Shehans, you might have heard about the Shehans formula or Shehans rule. So he has applied this Boolean algebra for designing of the electrical switching circuits. Till that time, uh, at, uh, till that time, there were the mechanical devices, maybe of the logical implementation here. But uh, in 1930, the Shehan applies the, the Boolean algebra for designing of the electrical switching circuits here. So thereafter, we have the electrical switching circuits, logical electrical switching circuits using the relays and all. And in the, that is one of the milestone. And in the 1954, so the corner creates the, the K map, corner map. So using this K corner map, so we are minimizing the, the logic circuits here. So these are all the major milestone as far as concern with the, the digital logic design theory. Now coming to the, the technology, and we know that the transistor was invented in the year 1947 at Bell Laboratories. So after the invention of the transistor, there are major possibilities, there are major advances are possible in the semiconductor technology. So here, so two science scientists, the job Kilby and the Robert Noisy. So these two are patented for, they applied for, they filed the patents for the integrated circuits here within a six months of gap. So first, the job Kilby, uh, he was filed a patent uh, on the integrated circuit in the February 1959 on the title Minimatured Electronic Circuits. So while he was working for the Texas Instruments here. Whereas the Robert Noyes is also filed a patent, second, pa second to patent for the integrated circuit on the titled semiconductor devices and the lead structure in the month of July 1959 here. So the, so the Jack Kilby and the Robert Noises, the, they, are, they were the, the fathers for two, the integrator circuits here. So the first integrator circuit model will be proposed by these two scientists here. And in the 1964, the Texas Instruments released the, the first TTL logic family. So this is the original series for the TTL logic family 7400. So that is the digital ICs are uh, available from this 1964. And in the 1968, the first uh, CMOS based logic was released by the RCA, is a company. And in the 1971, the first single chip microprocessor was released by the Intel Corporation, which containing the approximately 2,300 transistors. 
so these are all possible because of this 1959 uh, by the the jack kilby and the robert so because they are uh, proposed the integrated circuits and today uh, in 2012 you have uh, the 10 core exxon westerman x microprocessor containing the 2.5 billion transistors and currently today we are working on the 7 nanometer technology 7 nanometer technology and a billion number of transistors on a single dial so that is how the technology was evaluated after the integrated circuits here so this is the integrated circuits and then coming to the very important one is the cad tools here cad tools so the computer aided design tools are very important they are because so we have the hardware description languages and the hardware the hardware description languages will be describe the behavior and they will be in the form of the documentation and now these from these documentations so we have to get the the real time of the hardware circuit here so for that we will use the the computer aided design tools here so in 1970 the ibm company started for to create the logic synthesis algorithms in 1970 they started they were initiated but in the year 1978 so they have created the uh, they have created the, the first logic synthesis algorithm for their ibm mainframes here for their mainframe computers 1978 so from this here, uh, we, uh, the hardware description was started here, hardware description language. So here the hardware description language was initiated by the project, so which is given by the, the US DOD, Department of Defense. So the US Department of Defense is given a proposal or it, it, was, uh, it, is, uh, it was given a program which is very high speed integrated circuit program very high speed integrated circuit program sorry vhsic sorry vhsic very high speed very high speed high speed integrated circuits very high speed integrated circuits so this was the project initiated by the the us department of defense so for this, so there were many uh, companies, therefore there were many manufacturers were involved in designing of these very high speed integrated circuits. And so the, uh, and at that time, so many of the, most of the uh, manufacturers and most of the companies, so they were developed uh, their own integrated circuits using the, their own hardware description languages. So each company has their own hardware description language. So they have the, their own uh, description languages here. So because of that, as a result of that, uh, because of, uh, so there, there, there were many of the manufacturers, they are developing their integrated circuits and they, they, they were uh, given to the, the DOC, that is uh, the uh, DOD, the Department of Defense to so, but the problem with that is, so each company has their own hardware description language. And because of that, so because of that, uh, the integrated circuits, the, reprodu the reproducibility of the integrated circuits or the use of the integrated circuits, uh, it is not possible uh, for the manufacturer companies here. So it couldn't, uh, uh, it could not uh, possible uh, for to exchange with one manufacturer with the another manufacturer here. So that was the main drawback here. So, and the another one is the reprocurement and the reusage here. So reprocurement and reuses once if the device uh, has to be replaced. So therefore, again, they have to design the same kind of the circuit here. But there are many number of the companies, there, uh, there are many number of companies and they have developed their own integrated circuits and they have given to the the department of the defense department defense so so there were there were a lack of uh, 
standardization of the hardware description languages here because every company has their own hardware description language so it was uh, uh, it was became the difficult uh, difficult process to uh, design the, the same kind of uh, uh, digital circuit by the another manufacturer here because there should be a compatibility and there should be the replacement of the, the devices because uh, all the time we cannot use the, the same manufacturer, we cannot use the, the same supplier uh, devices. So sometimes we will go with the, the other suppliers, but, the, the, but all the suppliers had their own hardware description languages. Using their own hardware description languages, they have uh, developed their own integrated circuits. So there was a lack of the standardization for the hardware descriptions for describing the the digital circuits and for describing the documentation and for to design and for testing of the circuits are uh, uh, very difficult uh, because of the different manufacturers. So here the DOD has uh, uh, proposed this VHDL very high speed integrated circuit program. So for that they wanted to have the the standard hardware description languages across the suppliers across the industries so that they will have the 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 standard uh, uh, integrated circuits so they can be easily used at uh, for the DOD here that is the department of defense so to have that standard hardware description languages the department of defense contracted with the three companies so they are the ibm one of the company is ibm and the second company is these texas instruments and third one is the intermetrix here so these are the three companies so the the dvd contracted with these three companies to develop the a standard hardware description language here standard hardware description language so they start uh, so here the standard hardware description language was initiated in the year 1983 so this was initiated in the year 1983 by the DOD under the program of the very high speed integrated circuit so the three companies have working uh, on that uh, very high speed integrated circuits hardware description language and so in the year 1983 so it was initiated and in the year 1985 the first version of the tools called the vhdl very high speed uh, integrated circuit hardware description language was initiated in the year 1985 it was it, it was initiated in the 1983 and the first version of the hardware description language was released in the year 1985 and parallelly in the year 1983 the company automated integrated design systems developed very log hardware description language here so it is the independent of the vhdl it is not the dependent it is the independent of the vhdl the company automated integrated design systems have developed a very log hardware description language in the year 1983 but the first uh, uh, vhdl was released in the 1985 which is the vhdl the first hardware description language is vhdl okay so uh, so here the first hardware description language is uh, the first hardware description language it was meant for only for the documentation and for the logic simulation not for the logic synthesis so here in the year 1986 the company synopsis targeted for the logic synthesis here so this company have initiated for the logic synthesis for HDL for hardware description languages. So this synopsis company has started working on the logic synthesis and they were developed the logic synthesis and it was modified to use it for the VHDL languages here. With all these 
in 1985 is the first VHDL. It is only for the documentation and for the logic simulation. And in 1986, they have the logic synthesis. So by uh, by uh, uh, by uh, so for combining of these, so they were used for the VHDL. So here to have the standard hardware description language across the, the industry and across the suppliers. So the DOD is turned over to the IEEE standards. It is turned over to the IEEE standards. So Institute of Electrical Electronic Engineering. So this society has released the, the standard for the IEEE, uh, so the standards for the VHDL with a, uh, with a titled IEEE 1076 here. So after the releasing of this and the feedbacking from this, uh, the first version IEEE 1076 in the year 1993, in the year 1993, the modified a uh, version of the VHDL is released in the year 1993 with the same titled 1076 1993 here. And the latest version is 2003 here in the IEEE. Latest version for the VHDL is 1076 2008. Sorry, 2008. And uh, parallelly for 19 uh, for parallelly the very log hardware description language. In the 1995, the same IEEE Society has released the standards for the Verilog hardware description language with the titled IEEE 1364 here. So even today also, we are using the, the same IEEE standards for VHDL. We are using the 1076 standards and there are the other standards 1176 and uh, the for Verilog, the IEEE standards are the 1364 here. So these are all the uh, milestones that are uh, in the CAD tools here because they are very important here. The CAD tools only the, uh, go for the, the real time implementation for the hardware circuits. So this is uh, the, uh, these are the milestones for the technology as well as the CAD tools here. So just uh, to, Concluding for this slide or for concluding for this topic here, simply, so simply we can say that the hardware description language is a textual language here, or it is a programming language which describes the, the digital systems or which is used to describe and design the digital systems. Simply, we can state that the hardware description languages are used to describe and design the digital systems. And what are the uh, 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 advantages with the hardware description languages? So it can describe the behavior of the circuit. It can, uh, it can support for the logic synthesis. It can support for the logic simulation. So automatically or automated synthesis and the simulation is supported. So therefore we can easily design, we can easily model the digital systems here from a simple circuit to the complex circuits. So that is the uh, benefit with the hardware description languages. And the next one is the abstractions of the hardware description language. So the abstractions of the hardware description languages. So here the hardware description languages were defined to be able to model the behavior at multiple level of the abstractions here. So mainly these hardware descriptions were defined to be able to model the, the system at different levels of the abstraction. So here you can see the, the different levels of the abstractions here, system level, algorithmic level, RTL, register transfer level, gate level, circuit level, material level. So these are all different abstractions, levels of abstractions in the hardware description. Hardware description. 
So here the abstraction is important in design because it allows us to specify how system will operate without getting into the, the implementation details here, without looking at the, the components of the circuit. So we can describe the behavior of the, the digital system at the higher level itself here. Once if you have described the behavior, then we can go into the, the various levels of the abstractions here. For example, take uh, the system level. So system level abstraction here. So at this level of abstraction, the behavior of the system is described by stating the set of board specifications here. By stating the set of board specifications. So example for to this, for this type of design, if you take uh, a computer can compute, I mean that manipulate the data. A computer can compute the data at the 10 tera floating, 10 tera floating operations for the second. So what does it mean here? For one second, the computer computes or the manipulates the data 10 tera floating points and say a maximum of the power consume is 100 watts here. So these are all the behavior of this system at the higher level, that is the system level. Nothing but the specifications of that system, specifications of the rhythm. So the specification for this design, an example. So here the system can behave, uh, it can manipulate the data at 10 tera floating operations per second. For one second, it performs the 10 tera with a consumed of the maximum power consumption is 100 watts. So the system level, always the system level is describing the, the specifications of the system. And now the one level uh, uh, down from the system level, if you come one level down from the system level, algorithmic level. So in this algorithmic level, specifications, whatever the specifications we have at the system level, the specifications begin to broken down to the subsystems here, subsystems here. For example, take microprocessor chip. So where the microprocessor is the combination of the arithmetic logic unit, a control unit and the array of resistors or take microcontroller, the microcontroller will have internally, uh, uh, it is the combination of the microprocessor, RAM, ROM, and input and output devices. So therefore, these specifications are subdivided. The specifications are divided into subsystems here. They are the sub blocks here. That is algorithmic level. And one level come, if, uh, and one level uh, from algorithmic to down. So it is the resistor transfer level here. So in this resistor transfer level, so it, it, uh, it, it gives the details of how the data is moved between the devices or within the devices. Let's take the CPU at the higher level algorithm. So now how the data will be a mood in the CPU that can be described by the RTL level or how the data can be transferred between the CPU, RAM, ROM and IO that can be detailed, that can be uh, uh, given by the resistor transfer level. So the resistor transfer level, it gives the details how the data is moved between the subsystems or the within the system. So now uh, now the, the one level down to the register level is the gate level here. So it is the gate level. So at this gate level, the design is described by using the basic gates and the resistors here. So at the higher levels, you are stating that we wanted to have these specifications here. So now the specifications are divided into subsystems and the subsystems in that subsystems, how the data is 
uh, moving or how the data is transferring between the systems or within the systems is by the resistor transfer level. And now, while it is moving the data, so for moving of the data, we need the digital devices here. So when I say that CPU, how I can build the CPU? The CPU can build by using the logic gates here, logic devices here. So now at the gate level, at the gate level, so here the circuit is uh, the specifications are described with the digital gates and the resistors here. And now one level down to the circuit here. One level down to the circuit. So at this circuit level, it describes the, the operation of the basic gates here. So here you have the gates and how the gates exactly performs or how, how the gates are act. So that is given by this circuit level here. What are the internal circuit of the each gate? That is the circuit level. And one level down to the material. So here we will use the combination of materials to implement the transistors and the wires and the resistors and the capacitors. So, so the material level, it gives the, uh, the it describes the, the combination of materials. So to implement the resistors and the capacitors here. So in the hardware description languages, it is designed to model a digital system at different levels of the abstractions here. So what are the different levels of abstraction here? System level is a one abstraction level. Algorithmic is a one level of abstraction. You can easily understand algorithmic level is nothing but the block diagram. And the resistor level transfer. So at the resistor level, it gives the, the uh, it gives the input and output connections here. How the data is moving, how the data is transferring from one to other. So that is by the connections. So that is RTL here. And one uh, and the another level is and the another abstraction level is gate level. So where this at the gate level, we will describe the, the system in terms of the gates and resistors here. And the, at the circuit level, the circuit is described with the help of the transistors here. With the help of the transistors and other circuit elements. And at the material level, the circuit is described with the, the combination of the materials which are used to implement the circuit elements here. So now an example if you take is it possible to explain or is it possible to describe the a digital circuit at the transistor level is it possible if i want to describe a computer at the level of circuit level is it possible it is very impractical it is very tedious process it is very difficult process to be, to describe the, the behavior of the computer at the circuit level here. Why so? Because at the circuit level, you will have the billion of the transistors, billion of the transistors. So it is very difficult, it is very impractical to define the circuits at the circuit level here, to describe the circuit at the circuit level. So now what is the easiest, easiest way to describing or to model the circuit? at the system level, it is easy. So you can take a block diagram and you can give your requirements and you can give your required output, what you wanted at the output. So once if you have this, uh, 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 this once if you have this uh, uh, model, so then you can go internally by the algorithmic level, resistor level, gate level, circuit level, and the material level. So here in HDL, so it is supports up to system level to the gate level. You can model, you can design, you can describe any digital system from algorithmic level or from the system level to the gate level here. So that is the advantage with the hardware description language. These are all the levels of abstraction in hardware description language. So this is, uh, usually you see this uh, uh, 
chart in the VLSA design. So where the VLSA systems uh, can design the circuits at the three design domains, behavioral domain, structural domain, and the physical domain here. Even at these levels also, you can have the, the system level, algorithmic level, resistor transfer level, gate level, and the circuit level. Okay, so these are all. Uh, even in the VLSA design uh, domains also, you will have the, the same levels of the abstraction here. The next one is, so we will conclude here. So with uh, one slide, uh, this is the digital design flow. So how to design a digital system? So how to model a digital system? So here the steps uh, describes the uh, the various steps here describes the the digital design flow here so the first one is the specifications here so for any digital system we should come up with the desired behavior of the circuit what we wanted to have exactly that is very important so in the specifications we will state the the desired behavior of the circuit the desired behavior of the circuit example we wanted to design the full adder circuit. That is the specification with the three inputs and two outputs. They are the specifications. Or what we want to design the digital system. And the second one is the functional design. So here this functional design, it describes the high level architecture of the design. <laughs> Nothing but the block diagram. So uh, at the specifications, at the specifications, you will have a full ladder with the three inputs and two outputs at the specifications. At the block diagram, you will have the two half adder circuits with the their input and output connections here, their input and output connections. That is the functional design block diagrams. Or not only a block diagrams, even you can have the truth tables and the state diagrams also you can have so that you can uh, you can uh, know the, the functional of the design. And once if you have this, then we will have the synthesis here. So what is the synthesis? These are all the high level uh, abstractions here. The specifications and the functional designs are the high level. We are nowhere, we are not using any gates and any circuits here. We are just representing the, the circuit behavior with the help of the block diagrams only. But now in the synthesis, we will create the gate level connection here. So which means that, so one step into the abstraction. So the, uh, that is, so here we will use the, the synthesis, which means that the digital gates here, digital gates. So once if you have uh, the uh, digital, uh, once after the synthesis, then the te technology mapping here. Technology mapping in the sense, so what type of logic family that we can use to design or to use it to build the digital system here. So in this example, say a 74HC family with the 32 nanometer technology of a CMOS. These are the technologies here. We have bipolar technology, we have CMOS technology, we have bi CMOS technology, we have different channel lengths 32, 90, 60, 7, 14 nanometers of technology. So here we use the, the technology mapping here. So using which technology we wanted to build our circuit. And once after that, the place and route here. Once you have chosen the 74HC family with the 32 nanometer technology. So then how we have to place the components in that digital system. So we will have the different subsystems and how we have to place and how we have to connect internally all the subcomponents here. That is the place and route here. And once you done with the place and route, you will have the verification here. Verification here. So here the verification is also done with the simulation. It is also done with the simulation in HDL. In classical, we will use the some other devices, breadboard. Okay, so this is the verification here. So we will verify the, the functionality of the circuit. 
once after the placing the components and after connecting the components we will verify the functionality of that digital system once if you have the desired output once you have the expected output once if you have the expected output in the verification once you had the desired outputs then we will go for the fabrication again at the fabrication we will use the computer aided tools here in computer aided tools to get the device into the, in the form of the asic or in the form of the plg programmable logic devices or in the form of the integrated circuit all these are the integrated circuits on asics and programmable devices so this is a simple digital design flow first we will give the specifications and once if you have the specification then we will give it in the form of the block diagram and once if you have the block diagram so that will be down to the schematic level where you will have the, the further subsystem block diagrams and once you have the done with the synthesis then we will choose the the type of logic in the technology mapping and if you choose the technology then we will place the the different components uh, we will place different components uh, and we will connect them in the place and route and once the place and route is done we will verify the functionality that is the simulation functionality will be verified so once if the in the verification you had the desired output then we will go for the fabrication if there are any faults in the circuit or if you are not getting the desired output again we will be back and we will do the these steps again here we will repeat the steps here so once if you have desired output then we will go for the fabrication so this is the simple design flow so for today uh, we will conclude for here so in today's session for concluding so we will uh, conclude with the two points i mean for summarizing the first one is the purpose of hardware description languages and the second one is digital design flow here the purpose of hardware description language is for describing the digital hardware circuits and the digital design flow so you will have these steps uh, in designing of the digital system so in the next class we will discuss the uh, the classical design flow and then we will see the the modern design flow here and after that we will enter into the the vha hardware description language so thank you all so almost